Sports Center. Um, so yeah, we need to run another more, but I wanted to help Angel kick this thing off because I think this is could be a really cool thing if it is done the right way. Um, a little bit about me, I have been in music for like 10 years. Um, I'm a, believe it or not, a rapper. I know I don't give off that vibe, uh, but like more of like a Mac Miller type. I've actually worked with some of his producers. Um, so yeah, just uh, kind of, I feel like the big thing about like this right now is kind of showing y'all how to make like not only be creative but how to profit off it because that's where most people get it like discombobulated but yeah super happy to be a part and uh, thank y'all I'll let you said for coming out so yeah. so like just diving a little bit more in depth on what the creators roundtable is so at Wolf, the Wolf Center if you guys don't know like we're an extension of the Wolf Center the Wolf Center is an entrepreneurship program it's a year and a half it's pretty selective it's really intensive and it's basically teaching you how to go into the world and take control of your life both in the business aspect and then like personally, like your visions, your goals, developing you as a person. So our directors have the idea like, okay, we do so much within this program, but we want to be able to actually offer it out into the world that people who maybe like can't get into the program or are majoring in something completely different or want to just know more and like kind of dabble in the world of entrepreneurship and know more about it without like fully being immersed into the program. And one of the um, ideas that we came up with was like, really the Creators Roundtable. Actually, it's Dan Lynn, excuse me, and Dan Lynn, like, and Trump, where's Trump? She's the one who's over here. But we were like, okay, dang, like creators are like how to be slept on because we like a lot of times we carry like if you if there's a business in order for that business to be translated into the world, there has to be some type of creative input that's put into that. Like any billboard you see, any flyer you see, any social media post you see, anything that's done by a creative person. If it wasn't for that creative person, the brand wouldn't be able to be as big as it is. The brand wouldn't be be able to like be translated to the audience. So because of that. I was like, we need to be able to help the creators that are out there in the UH community turn their, whatever it is that they have going on, whether it's a small thing, whether it's a full-time thing, whether they don't really know what they want to do, but turn that into something that they can actually make money off of. And they can end up taking control of their life, both financially and creatively. Because at the end of the day, like it's either you take control of your life or you work for someone else, or you work for someone else and they take complete control of your life. So all of you guys have creative abilities. All of you guys have creative gifts. So this is just a place for you guys to like really like cultivate those gifts and learn the business acumen behind um, how you can actually make money off of those gifts, both part-time, full-time, whatever it is, that it is that you want to do, we want to be here to support you. So like I broke up the Creators Roundtable into three different things. The first thing is a community. Like I don't want this to just be a thing where I'm leading it and this is like a, a weird, awkward relationship we have. Like I'm one of you guys at the end of the day. Like we're, I want all of us to just like love each other and take care of each other so that we can all grow together towards our professional goals, whether that be part-time business, a full-time business, or maybe you really do want to go and work for someone else, that's okay. But at the end of the day, it's just being able to generate income um, using your skills, not shying away from whatever skills that you have because of like loss of stability or whatever it may be. And then the second thing is an incubator. So an incubator is like where small things like, like baby ducks or something can like grow in a safe space. And this is what I want it to be for us. Like obviously we're all, we're all college students. We don't really know exactly everything that's going on in the world. We don't exactly know like the exact path to take. We're scared, we have to take risks. But I want this to be a safe space. So I'm gonna be bringing in um, guest speakers to come. You guys have full access to me um, as a Wolf Center student and someone who's actually like done this and made money off of it. And it's for, it's for you guys to be able to take these skills and go out into the world and just change the world. Like walk out in purpose, not just living under someone else's purpose, but actually walking out in purpose. So that not only your lives can be changed, but the people around you can be changed. And then a resource. So like everything that you guys Get at the Creators Roundtable here going forth is completely free. If I say I, I can give you consulting, that's completely free. If I say there's someone coming in to speak, that's free. The connections are free. Everything is completely free. It's literally just pouring into you guys because I'm passionate. Like I know how hard it is as a creative to just like be so scared to step out into that, to be scared about what everyone else is gonna say, to be scared about, oh, what if my skills aren't good enough? Oh, what if I lose money? Oh, what if I, I post my business ID and people make fun of me? Like, no, like, this is supposed to be a safe space, a community, a resource for you to know that you can do these things. You can step out into whoever it is that you're made to be, whoever it is that God made you guys to be. You guys can step out into that. So, just like going forward, I wanted to create something where obviously I'm not going to be available for you guys all the time. So, I created this thing called Creation Teams. So, what Creation Teams, something in, in the Wolf Center that we do is we do dream teams, and it's basically like your core group of people outside of like the 27, 28 other classmates that you have that will push you towards your dreams and your goals 
and that will like hold you accountable on a weekly or daily basis, whatever that looks like for your team. So I created this thing called Creation Team to where you guys as creatives outside of this room, outside of the creatives around the table, outside of school, you guys can meet up and actually push each other towards, towards your goals. So if you wanna do photography, if you wanna be an artist, if you wanna paint, whatever it is, getting in a group of people, it can be three to four people, depending on how many people sign up, and actually going out into the world and pushing each other, like ha holding each other accountable, doing like basically doing what I can't do for you on an everyday basis. These are the um, people that you'll be doing life with, basically, like not life with, but doing your creativity with. Um, and that can be to your discretion. If you wanna meet with them once a month, meet with them once a month. If you wanna meet with them once a week, meet with them once a week. If you wanna meet with them every day, meet with them every day. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's all for your growth. Like I'm giving you all these resources. The people around you may wanna help you, but if you don't wanna help yourself, then there's nothing that we can do for you. But like this group, honestly, like I feel like will really be a catalyst for your growth because it's not just gonna end whenever school ends. You're not just gonna graduate and then you're done with the, you're done with the class. These are people, a group that I'm hoping that even after you graduate or whatever it is over the summer, you're able to really connect and then you're able to use each other's networks to be able to grow and just succeed. So if this is something that you're interested in, like please scan the QR code and um, it'll take you, take you to a link. Fill out the link, fill out the form. And then I'm gonna organize you guys in groups just based off of whatever it is that you guys put on there, like this is some criteria. And then I'll be like managing the, the leaders. So if you wanna lead this group, if you feel called to just like help a group of students step out into their creativity, come up to me afterwards and we can talk about you being a leader of this group because I also do need leaders, people who can actually like, um, like set up the meetings and whatever it is, people who wanna actually own this portion. And if you're scared, if you feel like you haven't led, or you feel like you don't know what to do, like don't let that discourage you from either joining the group or leading the group. Because I'm like more than happy to be able to help you guys in whatever whatever aspect that is. Just I know that this would be really, really beneficial to anyone who actually wants to step out and have like a close community outside of just the round table or school. So I'm gonna leave that for a couple more seconds for anyone who wants to sign up. Does anyone have any questions about this? I'm also gonna send in a groupie, um, just for those of you who are thinking, for those who haven't made it or won't be early to me. Hey, Troy, can we introduce yourself? Oh yeah, right. I thought we did it. Do that thing. What do you do for you? Well, She's also one of the leaders of the Creative Round Table. Huh? Oh. You're helping her. Oh yeah, I'm helping her um, bring out guests to the Creative Round Table. So we're actually gonna have a beauty entrepreneur coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, the reason why I want to bring like people in the beauty industry come out is some, something that's like very how do you say it? What's the word? Huh? Like lucrative. Oh, lucrative. Um, and it should be like spoken out more. You know, have more people in the beauty industry know how to like alleviate their brand. Um, so I'm gonna have a beauty entrepreneur coming out in a couple of weeks. But a little bit more about me. I'm a junior. I've mentioned uh, I'm studying entrepreneurship and finance, and I'm also like a license slash tech. Which is the reason why you know I'm really um, passionate about the industry. But yeah, it's nice meeting you guys. So. <laughs>
Resume if you need a portfolio. Okay, cool, perfect. <laughs> Everybody needs a portfolio if you're a creative, you need a portfolio. Because people are gonna ask you, what the hell do you do? You need to be able to show them visually, not just with your work. So um, I know someone who like, like uh, basically they recruit for stuff for people to get from uh, creatives to get to like Fortune 500 companies and they're like the middleman. And um, they like know how to look at a portfolio, tell if it's good, tell if it's bad, be able to tell if you're like the right person for the job. And then um, at the very end, maybe, but like I would like to throw like a possible event to promote all of your businesses. So like basically a big party where we have like a live music um, and then you guys will get free vendor spots. So if you, if you paint, if you draw, if you have a clothing brand, whatever it is, like come out, sell your clothes and then we're gonna like try and get students from all over to come and buy your stuff, but also to just have a good time. So yeah, um, I also have a question. Raise your hand if you already have a business right now. Raise your hand if you're making money off of your business. Raise your hand if you want a business. Raise your hand if you know what business you want. Okay. Raise your hand if you don't know. Okay, that's okay. Cool. Just wanted to kind of gauge the room. So, is he here? Yeah, he's here. Okay, cool. He's coming. But in the meantime, here are some questions. I want you guys to like just turn into the groups, like three or four, and just kind of like talk from question to question. Build their brands. Awesome. Angel, Billy, thank you guys for having me out. Thank you all for making time, taking time out of your days to come out here. Uh, this is always really fun for me. Uh, I just told Angel, I actually literally just came from my office where we were doing a very similar presentation for some Texas A&M marketing students. I'm sure you guys would be far more engaged, far more fun to work with. So uh, excited to be here and excited that uh, you guys gave me the opportunity. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll try to keep this as simple as possible because I know uh, like building your brand and building who you are is something that probably you each kind of have an idea of what it is you want to be doing. Uh, the goal is to try and help you get there and make it easy for you. So I've simplified it. Three very simple steps. Uh, and at the end of this, I'll make sure to leave time for anybody who has questions. I've got some business cards as well and all my information. So if you have any questions after the fact, don't hesitate to come up, stop me, reach out, uh, ask questions however uh, you would like. So look, the goal is to build your brand. Hopefully this clicker actually works, and if it doesn't, I'll just use the lap there, computer. Fine. First and foremost, who the hell am I? Uh, my name is Parker Hillis, as Angel mentioned. Uh, brand manager at Sports Radio 610 here in Houston. Uh, we're an Odyssey property. Any of you guys know what Odyssey is? By a show of hands. Couple people. If you listen to radio, uh, we have six different stations here, uh, formerly known as CBS Radio, formerly known as Intercom. Uh, now our brand is Odyssey. Uh, Sports Radio 610 and 650 The Bet are my two stations. We also have 100.3 The Bull. Uh, we have Mix 96.5. We have The Spot. And we have Mega 101.1. Uh, so if you listen to radio, if you listen to music, there's a good chance you've listened to one of the stations that I work with uh, as a part of Odyssey. I've been here in Houston for just under two years now. Uh, I got my start up in Dallas, worked at a station in Dallas for about six years, uh, moved to Denver for three, and then found myself here in June of 2022. Um, and my goal, my job, essentially, I'm in a really unique position. Uh, not only am I the protector, developer, strategic analyst, creator of the Sports Radio 610 brand, uh, I also work with radio personalities and talents whose sole goal is to develop their own brands and express who they are to an audience to sell themselves as personalities on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so when it comes to branding, it's something that I spend a lot of time working with. Uh, I'm very honored to be able to work with some really talented people uh, and help them develop. For me, the most fun part about my job uh, is working with my team and helping them develop who they are so that they can then go on air uh, and provide entertainment, information, analysis, uh, basically put themselves out there, not only on the radio, but now also for us on YouTube, on Twitch, on TikTok, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you name it, we do it. Uh, and I try to be an integral part of that process. On top of that, I also work with our sales team and our marketing team to develop ideas and strategies for us to be able to take who we are and take our individual brand and our company brand and go sell it, make it marketable, make it something that we can monetize. Uh, so it, it's funny, I kind of look at this 
uh, as a really cool blending of, you know, I, I develop a brand, I work with a brand as a business, but my job is to work with individual brands too. And so hopefully as you're listening to me today, all of these, the three steps that I'm giving you, they'll work whether you're trying to become an influencer and you're trying to really focus on your own individual brand, who you are, or if you're trying to start a business and trying to think about what the brand of your business is gonna be, uh, or if you're walking into an interview for a company and trying to figure out you know, who you are and how that relates to how you're going to go make yourself marketable in the workplace. Uh, ideally, all three of those things will be covered by what I'm talking about today. So what are the steps? Before we get there, I uh, just wanted to read this very quickly. This is from Steve Forbes, who if any of you know who Forbes is, uh, they compile all sorts of information. Uh, the Forbes list is where you find all the most successful, uh, highest paid, uh, and highest net worth business people uh, throughout the world. Uh, Steve Forbes said, your brand is the single most important investment you can make in your business. I'm gonna take that a step further. Your brand is the single most important investment you can make in yourself. Because at the end of the day, you all have your own individual brand. Uh, again, whether you're trying to be an influencer, whether you're trying to uh, be a TikTok, Instagram star, whether you're trying to go put yourself into the workplace as an entrepreneur, build a product, build a, a brand, build a business, uh, who you are is what you're selling to your audience, to the people that you're trying to uh, sell your product to, sell yourself to. Uh, so your brand is the, the thing that you have to take the most time and effort into figuring out Sometimes that's kind of a scary proposition, right? When I say I am my own brand, there's a lot that that entails. You think, oh man, I gotta go market myself. I gotta go figure out a plan to make myself money. I gotta figure out uh, you know, how I'm gonna get from play step A to step B to step C. Good news is really it all narrows down to three very, very small things uh, when you think about it. At least I hope you'll, you'll find that after uh, the end of this conversation. What do you do first? Well, first and foremost, if we're trying to figure out who we are as a brand, you've got to find yourself. You've got to figure out what you do best. Um, to do that, it's three very simple questions. Question one, what is it that I'm good at? Pretty simple. Question two, what do I want to do next? Question three, what connections do I have that will help me get there? You may sit there and look at that and go, God, Parker, that is really, really basic and really, really generic. Honestly, that is what it is. Because again, look, as you are developing your brand, if you're stepping into the business world, if you're stepping into the influencer world, if you're just trying to figure out how you're gonna prepare for the interview that you've got coming up next week, if you're gonna go in and answer questions for someone that you are presenting yourself to, you gotta know who you are and you gotta know how to be prepared to answer those questions. Uh, the best way that you can do that is figure out what it is that you wanna do, figure out what it is that you're really good at, and figure, it, figure out who it is that you know that can help you get there. Uh, I was at a conference last week, uh, and Stephen A. Smith, I don't know how many of you in this room know who Stephen A. Smith is. Uh, extremely talented, extremely well-known sports broadcaster. He's done radio, he's done TV, he's done writing. Uh, you see him on ESPN on just about every single show that they put out there, uh, from first take to their NBA product. Uh, he now has his own podcast network, podcast company. He, he does everything in the entrepreneurial space that is media. Uh, yeah, he was the keynote speaker at this, at this summit uh, of a lot of really, really uh, you know, high-powered, experienced management business minds, but also some college students who are trying to get into radio, which for me is, is home. Uh, and he sat there and he, he had one kind of final closing statement. And I thought it was really unique, but I think it's also really powerful. Uh, how many of you guys, when you were growing up, heard from mom, dad, friends, parents, mentors, whoever it may be, that you can do whatever it is that you wanna do when you grow up? Show of hands, anybody heard that before? Probably a lot of us. Stephen A. Smith sat up on a stage talking to college students, to managers, to experienced talent, to all of us and said, Pardon my French, it's bullshit. You can do whatever you want, sure, fine, whatever, but that doesn't mean you're gonna be successful at whatever you try to do. Your goal, at the end of the day, when you are trying to build your brand, is to figure out what it is that you do really, really well, and what it is that someone is going to pay you to do really, really well. So you can come up and say, you know, I, I'll use 
podcasting that's in my world is something that is a good example. Everybody's got a podcast, and it's really easy for me to say, hey, I've got all this information, and I really like talking about this, so I'm gonna go talk about this. Well, I can assure you that if you do a podcast about Houston sports, there's probably already 500, if not 1,000, podcasts about Houston sports. How are you supposed to stand out in that world? Well, it's something you wanted to do, but it's not necessarily something that you can make yourself marketable by doing. So your goal at the end of the day is to figure out who you are, figure out what you do really, really well, and then figure out how to separate yourself from everybody else that's walking into that workplace or walking into that marketplace or using their own brands to try and stand out to. So you gotta focus on your strengths. You gotta focus on the things you know best, the things that you're really passionate about, the things that you're able to sit back and look and say, this is something that I do really, really well. Uh, my boss, who is an extremely uh, well-regarded market manager and uh, personality in the community, Sarah Frazier, uh, is the chairperson of the Texas Bowl Board, works very closely with the Hispanic, Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, uh, is extremely invested in this community, uh, says it this way, uh, you gotta find your superpower. Everybody's good at certain things, everybody has these things that you like to do, but you gotta figure out what it is that you do really, really well, because that's the thing that you've gotta attack, get committed to, find your passion in, and really focus on as you are building your brand, again, for whatever it is you're trying to do. On to step two, how many of you guys have seen the movie Wolf of Wall Street? Pretty well-known movie, interesting movie. Let's see if I have sound here. Okay, I do, but it's very low. We'll pause it and we'll move on. If you remember that scene, it's the sell me this pen scene. If you've never seen the movie, uh, let me just kind of give you a little demonstration. So I'm just gonna kind of find, I don't know, a couple people in the room. Me. <laughs> <laughs> sell me this pen. Why do I need this pen? Okay. Why don't you write your name down? Okay. I would. Why do I need to use that pen? I mean, do you have another pen you can use? That's a good question. I don't currently. Uh, what makes that pen better than someone else's pen here in the room, though? Uh, are they willing to sell it to you? Sure. All good questions. Let's find somebody else. Some of this pen. I do need a pen. You know, I, I'm looking for a pen that'll work. And that works. This works. Okay. Uh, I'll ask you the same question I asked him. I'm sure there's somebody else in the room that's got a pen. Why shouldn't I use that pen? Okay, what? Okay. Awesome. I know you wanted to do it as well. Some of this pen. Let's forget that pen for a moment, right? Okay. Sure. You bought a house. Sure. You bought a car. Sure. You graduated. Right? Sure. All the important life events. Okay. And whenever you bought a house, mm -hmm. you had a time to play. Yep. Sure did. What do you have to do? Right. You need a pen. You needed a pen. You needed a pen. Okay. Now, that's one of a life-changing moment, right? Buying a house. Sure. That's impressive. So imagine if you had a pen that meant something. Mm -hmm. A pen that you took with you whenever you buy a house. Sure. Whenever you buy your car. trying to get me to, to, to sell me this pen. Um, and look, if you've seen the movie, you understand that the, the crux of that, the movie itself was you know, going to Wall Street, selling, making money, and then it was more of a sales conversation, right? Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't expect any of the three of you guys to do as well as you did there. Uh, in my head, I had this whole kind of like bullet point of ways that I expected it to go. 
at its core, what I was hoping you would do, or what the message I wanted to get across to you is, the most important thing that you should ask or focus on when we do that exercise is not how awesome this pen is, it's what do I need it for? It's asking me questions, what, why do you need the pen? What is it you're trying to do? What is it you're trying to accomplish? To get an idea of who I am. That's step two in building your brand, is figuring out your audience. Figuring out who it is that you're selling yourself to, your brand to. Whether you're starting a business, again, whether you're trying to be an influencer, right? Your goal at the end of the day is to get someone to connect with you. It's to get someone to decide that your time is more valuable than someone else's, that your skills are more valuable than someone else's. How do you do that? Not by just stepping up and saying, this is why I'm as incredible as I am. It's by first taking the time to do the research and figure out, how am I gonna connect with the person that I'm talking to here? How am I gonna connect with my audience? Asking questions like, why do you need the pen? What are your goals with the pen? What is it that you're looking for in a pen? What would make this pen successful? That's the same kind of questions that an interviewer, uh, a manager, uh, an audience, a fan base is going to ask you as you're developing your brand. Why are you so different than the 15,000 other people that I see, the 100 other people I'm gonna interview this week? Uh, Knowing your audience is so critical because that's how you put yourself in the best position to brand yourself, to take those things that you care about, to take those passions that you care about, like I mentioned, and make sure that they connect on the other end. You're not just doing this as a one-way street. Every encounter you have, every time you're trying to sell your brand, you are selling it to someone, or for some reason to a, an audience of people. And if you don't know who that audience is, you're very likely going to miss the mark on what your brand needs to be. Everything is sales. That's the big secret here. And it really shouldn't be. At the end of the day, everything's transactional. If I'm trying to tell you who I am and why my information is better than the next speaker you're gonna have come to this conversation, or why I'm equipped or qualified to have these conversations with you, I gotta sell myself to you. I gotta make it very clear that I know what I'm talking about, otherwise you're gonna get up and walk out of the room, or you're gonna sign your phone and text your friend and say, why the hell am I wasting 45 minutes of my time listening to this yacht? Uh, again, you're building your brand for that audience. You gotta know who you're talking to so you can prepare yourself adequately, develop your own skills, figure out what your skills are, and then be able to express those skills to the person that you are trying to impress, get hired by, become marketable for, et cetera, et cetera. And I've already said it, and Stephen A. Smith uh, really kind of said it even more uh, bluntly than I did. The goal can't be to do what you want. That has to be a part of it. Like, you gotta enjoy what you're doing. You never wanna just sell yourself off just for the money or just for the fame or whatever it is. Like, there's gotta be a passion there, otherwise you're gonna burn out. But you have to be focused on what will connect to your brand best. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. In the radio industry, this is at its core what we do. My goal is to find an audience. My goal is to get as big of an audience as possible listening to my station. Uh, and I work with my guys all of the time. Um, not only are we working on you know, talking about the Texans or the Cougs or the Rockets or the Astros or whoever it may be on the radio, but how they can make themselves more accessible to an audience that maybe isn't a sports fan, maybe isn't as locked in on the Texans or the Cougs or maybe from a different city who's coming to the transplant. Uh, and the way that we do that is, frankly, to be as open and honest with them as possible and say, you know, be yourself. Share your life experiences. Share your relational, you know, what it is that you care about. Share the things that, if you were sitting in a bar with your buddies every single night, what are the things you're talking about? When you've got 15 different games on the TV, whether it's March Madness coming up this next couple of weeks, whether it's the Texans, whether it's the Netflix show you watched, Whatever it may be, if it's something that you enjoy that you would be able to have a conversation with, that's what I ask them to do on air because that's what makes them the most marketable to the most people possible. Uh, you know, I'll share a, you know, a very unique experience uh, I have with one of my talents as well. And you know, I can go through a list of, of names of people I've worked with. Uh, I have the, the pleasure and the luxury of working with athletes, entertainers, um, along with journalists and radio hosts. 
former NFL players who have won Super Bowls, uh, former baseball players, one of which uh, is best known and is in the Hall of Fame because he gave up the record-breaking home run to Barry Bonds 20-some-odd years ago. Um, former players who barely scratched into the league by winning TV shows, uh, talents in general. I worked with the runs again. Uh, but for me, at its core, no matter who you are, you have to build your, and develop your personality. And, and the way that I've asked them to do that uh, is by getting down to the core of what it is they like and how they connect with an audience. Step three, you've got to be fearless. Uh, when you're connecting with people, you can't be afraid to get out in front and ask questions. You can't be afraid to go meet uh, potential bosses. You can't be afraid to try new things. Uh, look, for me, my journey was a really unique one. Uh, I mentioned it a little bit, but I didn't get too deep into it. I didn't start out in radio. I didn't start out in trying to create a brand. My first three years in college were spent as an aerospace engineer major. And I realized very quickly that that was not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I didn't want to sit uh, in front of a table and do formulas and math problems and any of that. Uh, I realized that I wanted to talk and be in the sports world and uh, kind of work with talent in this way of communicating. Uh, how did I do that? Well, I left school from Auburn University where I was, moved back home to Dallas, and reached out to a local radio station that I had worked at, or that I had listened to, excuse me, uh, through the app Cyberdust, who you guys probably have no idea what Cyberdust is. It's a precursor to Snapchat. Uh, it was heavily funded by Mark Cuban. But one of the shows on that station was very close with Mark, and were promoting this new cool app that you could send a text to and it would disappear after, just like Snapchat, right? So I sent them a cyber dust, thinking, okay, well, this is what they're promoting, this is what they're doing. And I said, hey, you know, I, I don't know how I'm going to get into this. I don't know what it is that I'm trying to be, like, I don't know how to get here. I don't know how to get to where, you, to where you are. But any help that you guys can provide would be great. Can I come sit up in your show? Can I come watch what you do? Can I take you out to coffee and just ask you questions for an hour? Um, not knowing what the response was going to be, not knowing if they were going to respond at all or if they were just going to look at it and go, well, this is the 15th different message I've gotten. Screw it. Move on. Uh, but by a little chance of luck, they responded back and they set me up with an internship coordinator and I got an internship there. That only happened because I was willing to put myself out there to this group of guys who I had heard on the radio for years and was, to a certain degree, starstruck by, but took the time thought about my audience, thought about those guys, and said, this is what they're promoting, this is something that they obviously care about, because if they didn't, they wouldn't be talking about it on the radio every day. And I met them where they are, or where they were. I used them, who were successful in the industry, asked questions, tried to figure out how they got to where they were. Uh, and for my story, along the way, I, I, you know, I hosted, I did some of the things that they were doing, but I found that at the end of it, the coaching and the training and the big picture conversations is more of what I wanted to do, so that's the direction I went. But again, I don't know how many people reached out to them. I don't know how many people sent them messages. I don't know how many people um, you know, tried to get into my shoes in that moment. But in my mind, finding out what it was that they cared about and meeting them there was doing everything that I could to stand out. I've heard stories. I've got a, a, a personality on my staff right now, actually, uh, who, at a previous job, uh, back in the day, knew that the boss who was hiring was a big fan of the outdoors, of kayaking. So in order to get that job, he showed up to the lobby of the radio station, walked into the, to the secretary, wearing a life jacket and carrying an oar, and said, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm here to have a conversation with the manager. I know there's a job open, and I'd like to, I'd just like to talk to him about it. Well, that obviously stood out a little bit. Uh, it was a very unique part of his brand, of being willing to put himself out there. He was a really, he still is a very boisterous talent, but it got him a meeting with that manager, and it eventually got him a job on that radio station because he was willing to do something that maybe not anybody else and you gotta be consistent. 
if you're building your own platform on social media, TikTok, Instagram especially, uh, if you are trying to go find that job and uh, trying to you know, get meetings with potential employers, whatever it may be for your brand, you have to be considered, you have to be willing to do it over and over and over and over again. So I'll lean heavily on TikTok, for instance. Um, if your brand is on social media, if you're not willing to make posts three or four times a day, every single day, you get lost in the watch. Everybody's posting, everybody's creating YouTube content, everybody's creating Instagram reels. You have to be consistent, not only because that allows you to develop who you are, but also because the way that the algorithms and things work on those social media platforms, the more consistently you post, the stickier that becomes and the more likely those platforms are to boost your content out and put it out to more people so that you can be seen by more people. In the same way, if you're just trying to use your brand to get you a job, working, moving into the workforce, send a note to that boss, that potential boss. Ask for that interview. Then ask again. Then ask again and again and again and again to the point that you were a fly, that that boss is trying to swat away from him or her. Uh, because those are the ones that stand out. Those are the ones that I look at as a manager and I say, oh, that person really, really wants it. They know exactly who they are. They know exactly what they're trying to get. And at the very least, I need to have a conversation with them because that's the type of person that I would like to work with the type of person that's going to do everything that it takes every single day to go that extra mile and make sure that they're at the forefront of my mind and the forefront of every other person's mind that they're interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis. So find yourself, know your audience, be fearless. I have a little exercise that I'd like for all of us to take part in. It's gonna take about five minutes. This is something that I do with my talents in, at the radio station. But again, I think this is something that personally for me can work, whether you're a radio personality or trying to just build who you are as a brand to figure out what it is you want to do next. You've probably heard of an elevator pitch. You've probably heard of a mission statement. Most good businesses have them. In fact, all good businesses have them. Uh, the easiest way for you to do that, or I'm gonna ask you to do here for the next five minutes or so, is come up with five words, five words or phrases that describe yourself, your interests. This is your brand in its simplest form. So for me, for instance, just an example, the five words that I would use to describe myself are communicator, sports focused, strong willed, high energy, and coach. That is how I would describe myself if I were asked to give me five words. So for the next five minutes before we do anything else, you just kind of Talk amongst yourselves, individually think about the five words or phrases that you would describe yourself. And if you already kind of feel like you know yourself and if you're trying to develop into a brand or you're trying to you know, work towards a business, kind of have that in mind, keep that focused as to how you would describe yourself in five words to a potential employer or uh, to someone who's asking you, you know, why I should hire you. Does that make sense? Give you guys like five minutes to kind of piece that together in your heads. And eventually we'll come together and I'll let you guys share those uh, between each other.
five, I want you to think about what it is that you are trying to accomplish, what it is that you're trying to do next. I know Angel mentioned most of you kind of know what goal you have for your brand, whether it's what job you're trying to be a part of, whether it's how you're trying to grow yourself moving forward. So I want you to think about that. And I want you to take that in mind and take the five words that you've put together to develop it into a mission statement that tells the story of who you are as to how it relates to what you're trying to do. So for me, in my role, I would take my five words and I would say I'm a strong-willed, high-energy, sports-focused com communicator whose goal is to coach others on how to be a better sports talker. This is where the group piece comes in because I want you to help each other put together a statement similar to that. This is also going to force you to talk to some people you may not know. It's going to force you to put yourself out there and be a little bit fearless. Don't be afraid to express who you are, what you're trying to do, what your goal is in life. And take those five words to try and put together just one sentence about who you are and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Make sense? Okay. Let's find like groups of three or four. Turn around, get up. You don't all have to sit in the same seats. Uh, and we'll do about five minutes on that. You just need like Arthur? Arthur, you want to come join us? You had and mesh them with the goal that you have in mind. Maybe, hey, I feel like my five words don't exactly fit what it is that I want. Decent number of hands, and I had a conversation back here. Look, at the end of the day, what this whole project is about is being able to take those five words and you yourself fit them to what that goal is. Um, so I'll use you know an example we talked about back here. And excuse me, I don't remember what your name. I don't think I got your name. Right. Yes, Adele. Adele. I was talking with Adele, and Adele asked me specifically, "Okay, I've got five words, but I really don't feel like the thing that I want to do." fits what those five words know, you know, those five words, would you mind sharing what those five words were, Adele? Uh, my words were curious, empathetic, encouraging, overly analytical, and hardworking. Okay. And what was it that you were trying to, your goal, or what was it that your focus is, or what is it you, you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, well, I'm a finance major, okay. and so I, I was strongly considering financial planning, the okay. PFP track here at UE. And what I heard from the conversation was that your concern was, well, my five words feel like more like emotional, big picture kind of personality type words. I don't know how they fit with the financial sector. Okay. Well, the conversation we had flipped around to, okay, if my words are more about these big picture, emotional, caring, thoughtful, I like working with people and I like communicating with people, well, in the financial sector, how do I do, how do I combine those two things? Well, by being like a financial advisor or working with other people to use my knowledge, my information, my analysis of the financial industry uh, to help someone else. And that was the connection that we made uh, as you were struggling to do that. So at the end of the day, what this exercise is, is built to do for you is to take the five characteristics you have, or the, and you're not limited to five, but the five that you brought up today and really critically think about how do I take what I'm good at? How do I take my brand, how I would describe myself to you, because at its core that's what your brand is, is how you present yourself, how you describe yourself, who you are. How do I take that and express it to someone that I'm trying to interact with and trying to uh, impress or trying to be hired by or trying to uh, reach out to uh, in whatever space it is that you may be doing? How many people were actually able to come up with a statement. Mission statement of one sentence. Okay. For those of you who don't, don't feel bad. I would say take this exercise home and keep thinking about it because at its core that's what you're going to need to do as you're moving on to whatever your next step is. It starts with figuring out who you are and starts to figure out what it is you want to do and then you got to figure out how to combine those two. Uh, does anybody maybe take one or two volunteers to share the mission statement that you came up with. I'm curious just kind of to hear what some of the uh, sure. discussions were. Uh, so I put for five words, uh, since I do videography, I put uh, memories, quality, fun, determined, and uh, documenting life. And for the mission statement, I put capturing the beauty of life, because I capture like what's interesting sure. to me. Yeah. Sure, so you want to do maybe photography or filmmaking or develop 
Yeah, and get paid for it. <laughs> no, sure. But the fact that I was able to hear your five words, hear your mission statement, and know exactly what it is that you're trying to do tells me that you're on the right track. Because at the end of the day, congratulations, now you have something to add to a resume, or you have a basis for an elevator pitch if you run into someone who's looking for a, uh, a photographer, a filmmaker, a videographer, something like that. You now know, hey, this, just want to introduce myself, this is who I am, this is what I do, and this is why I feel like I'd be qualified to help you with what you're doing. Um, and at the very least, you have a blueprint to build your brand on. Anybody else want to share theirs? Um, so I'm in management, and then my five words were down-to-earth, leader, compassionate, adventurous, and imaginative. So I put, I'm a down-to-earth, compassionate, and adventurous leader whose goal is to guide others to create imaginative futures. Okay. So it's all about you know, taking your creativity, taking how it is that you view the world, and sharing that with potential employees or potential mentees. Perfect. You know what your plan is. Now you just have to capitalize on what your what your strengths are to go achieve your goal. Do you want to share yours too? Yeah, uh, five words I have were identity seeking, dharma seeking, charismatic, creative, and God fearing. And my phrase was, I am a creative, charismatic, God fearing man whose goal is to help people find who they are and their purpose in life. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, can you be a little more specific as to? what that goal would be like. So for instance, are you trying to be like a, a life coach? Are you mm -hmm. trying to be like a counselor? So I'm a, I'm a comp sci major, but okay. I'm hoping from what I learned and what I become as my comp sci career, I can use that to help people find who they are. Okay, so yeah. cool, that makes sense. Um, again, point of the exercise is you're finding who you are and you're figuring out how that meshes with what your goal is in life. And I can't say this enough, can't stress this enough. Um, when you're trying to build your brand, your brand is who you are. No matter whether you're trying to get into business, trying to be an influencer, trying to go find whatever that next job or next opportunity is, at its core, you have to present the best version of who you are to meet your audience, to meet who it is you're trying to impress where they are. That's the core of your brand. Your brand is you. It can't be fake, it can't be forced, it can't be something that if I meet you and I, I, I listen to your mission statement, I listen to who you are, I go, okay, that's just them trying to be something they're not. Because in the real world, people sniff that out very, very quickly. You never wanna be a character, you have to be real. You have to be authentic, you have to be approachable, you have to be yourself. Because at the end of the day, the thing that you are going to do the best, the thing that you're going to know the best, is being who you are. Any questions? I know we've got over a lot, and a lot of it is very big, big picture stuff. Happy to answer more specific type questions, larger scale questions. One over here. So that question about who am I, who mm -hmm. you are, that's something I've actually been you know, uh, trying to discover mm -hmm. for the past six, seven months now. Sure. And I feel that it just comes from a lack of real world experience, because mm -hmm. you don't actually know who you are. Definitely. You go out and experience. So what kind of tips and advice would you give to somebody that doesn't no question, like sure. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to go out and meet people. Don't be afraid to, if you see something that piques your interest or your curiosity in the business world or in life, find someone who is already actively experiencing that. Ask them to, ask them to copy. Send them an email. Don't be afraid to go that step and ask them because I think what you'll find is there are people who in this world or experienced in these different walks of life and these things that have found what it is that they're looking for are more than willing to answer questions and to kind of help guide you and provide advice, suggestions. They just, they can't do that if you don't ask. They can't do that if they don't encounter someone who's looking for that advice or looking for that information. So don't be afraid to ask. And secondarily to that, don't be afraid to fail. There are going to be things that you do, there are going to be things that you try that just don't work. And that's okay, because look, I mean, I said it. I went off to college for basically three years to do something that three years in I decided this is not for me. And I can guarantee you, my parents and my wallet definitely weren't super, you know, super thrilled with. Yeah, three years into this whole engineering thing, now I'm gonna step away and go try something new and different. Uh, the loans that I racked up were not fun to pay off. 
Uh, the challenges that that created for myself were difficult to overcome, but at the end of the day, it was worth it because I was able to take that experience and figure out, all right, I, I need to be around other people. I need to be communicating. I need to be using my gifts not to sit and do formulas, but to go out and what ended up being for me, work in radio. So sometimes failure is the best thing for you. Can't be afraid to go out and try things just because you're not sure if they're going to work or not, because you never know if you don't try. Uh, I have questions? something to add yeah. to uh, So uh, just try new things and uh, do at least one thing every day that scares you. I, lo I love that advice. Like, you got to get out of your comfort zone because, again, that's the only way that you can challenge yourself. And that's the only way you can really learn is by doing things you've never done before. Uh, by you know, asking people that know these things questions about what they do to learn more about them, that's the best way to kind of figure that out. Other questions? Um, for me personally, mm -hmm. I struggle a lot with being consistent. Mm -hmm. um, I do see a lot of challenges when it comes to, for instance, I pay for school. Sure. Um, no scholarship, no FAFSA, no points sure. to help. So when it comes to being consistent, I find it very hard to like sit and create content to mm -hmm. do these things that are goals of mine um, because I'm at work. Yeah. Because I'm working like 12 hours sometimes like every single day. Sure. And so it's very difficult to sit down and do what I really want to do because I feel like I have to do these things first to get where I'm trying to be. Definitely. That is a challenge. Uh, and, and look, the, if, at the end of the day, the truth is you've only got 24 hours in a day and as you are trying to find yourself and as you're trying to advance in industry, as you're trying to move from you know, being a college student to moving into the, the world of, of business and work, or, or, or in your case, if you're trying to you know, create content and be an influencer, it is certainly not easy to you know, work all of those things together. You got bills to pay, you got things to, you know, people to take care of, time to spend with family and friends and loved ones. Um, and what I would tell you is the hard answer is sometimes sacrifices have to be made. And, and if you really feel like this is the direction you want to go, sometimes you have to be willing to prioritize things and sacrifice some things. Um, now, I would never say you put yourself at risk. So don't go quit your job. Don't you know, stop sleeping, make yourself sick physically. Like There's a lot. But what I would tell you is for the most part, it may not be easy, it may be stressful, but there are certainly ways that you can, with self-discipline and with like, prioritizing your schedule and working, like taking time to really figure out and nail down what's going on. How do I stay consistent in this? It may not be easy, I may not love it. Maybe I have to wake up an extra hour earlier or go to bed an extra hour later and get a little bit less sleep. Uh, it may mean that I don't get to go out with my friends every Friday night when I gotta be you know, trying to put together my content. That's, especially early on, the commitment you kind of have to find your way through. Specifically in your case, it's like trying to create content, right? We live in a world now where you can pre-schedule things out. And you know, there are softwares and there are things online that are free access that you can use to, if you're creating videos, for instance, and you know that, I know that I want to do one video per week, and I'll, I'll use one of my employees at work, one of my radio hosts, Landry Locker, uh, who not only is my midday host from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., but he also now has created his own YouTube channel and his own YouTube show and built his own individual brand in that way. Uh, he likes to take, like he takes vacations and he's not always gonna be, and he has a show every single day that he has to focus on. Uh, he doesn't always have time to do a two hour show on his YouTube page at night. But he knows that on those nights that I'm out of town or on those nights that he's got a life and a four month old baby, the times that I know I'm gonna be busy, well, I gotta make sure that I've got something pre-scheduled. So it's, you know, hey, if I know I've got a vacation coming up, I'm gonna take an extra six hours today. I'm gonna to find time in my day to take extra six hours, either today or tomorrow, or whatever it may be, to schedule it, to create a video and schedule it so that it's there at the time that it usually would be. So it's always a video a day. So you can kind of create that consistency creatively. Uh, a lot of it does come down to commitment, though. Uh, it's hard. 
there doesn't ever seem to feel like there's enough time or enough hours in the day when you're busy, when you're working, when you've got school, when you've got a lot going on. Um, but I would challenge you and I would say, you know, one thing that for everyone you have to just kind of take a look at is ask yourself, what is it that I'm trying to do and how badly do I want it? And what are the things that if I sacrifice for a short term, aren't gonna kill me, aren't gonna make me sick, aren't gonna mean that I gotta sleep on the streets, but are the things that I can get rid of for a month, two months, a year, so that I can achieve my goal, and then when I've achieved that goal, I'll be able to bring those things back in. Yes? I was just gonna say, based on what you said, yeah. the uh, preparing ahead of time, uh, one of my favorite quotes I was listening to on uh, motiv mot it's like Motiversity, mm -hmm. it's like one of those YouTube channels, but it's like a motivation video. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's like, success is about when preparedness meets opportunity. So just make sure you stay prepared because your opportunity is gonna be there. Yeah, you, nev you never know when that opportunity is gonna arise. Um, and if you're not prepared, the, the worst thing that can happen is something comes up and you just weren't ready for it. And then A, you don't feel like you were adequ adequately represented. You don't feel like your brand was put out the way that it should be. And it, it certainly, sometimes it's not if you're not prepared, right? And that does have lasting effects. So for instance, that opportunity comes up and a brand will approach you to try and be an endorser for their product. If you're doing a, a YouTube video or Twitch or TikTok or whatever it may be, and they come up to you and you don't have a product ready for them, well, those brands talk. And you know maybe the marketing director of that company moves to a different company later and you're really interested in working with that company, but then they can look back and go, hey, this person, last time I talked to them, they weren't prepared, so uh, not sure how I feel. The best thing you can do is be thinking ahead, be prepared, like you said. You, you really never know when those opportunities are going to arise. So it's, it's a, like a hard answer, right? Um, it's not a science, it's an art. You sometimes kind of have to figure your way through it. But if you are prepared when those opportunities come up, you have a far better chance to capitalize on it. You're very welcome. Any other questions? So, me personally, I, I'm finding it really hard to find an interest or even just like a niche interest mm -hmm. because I feel like I'm open to everything. Sure. And so I feel like wherever field I go, whatever topic it is, you know, I'm able to get the task done, I'm able to engage in a discussion. But how can I really find that, you know, that one interest where I can be really passionate about? Not because I can do it, essentially, because I'm flexible and everything, but because I actually want to pursue it. Sure, that's a really, really good question. Um, I think that's where trying things, like actually actively engaging in things, is really critical. So if you, for instance, I, and I don't know what your passions or what your, your goal is in general going forward, but if if you jump into the business world and you take an opportunity, not knowing exactly what you're gonna think about it, two or three months into that opportunity, you're gonna know whether you like it or not. And if you like it, great, you found something that you can really attack and continue to grow in. And if you don't like it, well, you look for a new opportunity. And that can be really scary. And what I would tell you is there will be a certain point where you kind of have to determine like, what it is that I really wanna do for the rest of my life. Um, you know, as because there there is this when you're thinking about your brand, there's kind of this stigma that gets attached if you aren't able to find what it is you're looking for. If I look at a resume for a potential employee, for instance, and there's seven different opportunities from seven different jobs that only lasted two to three months, I then start to question, okay, why is this person not sticking somewhere? Is it a lack of commitment? Is it that they've really struggled in things they've tried to do? Uh, Again, I, I, there's maybe not a specific answer I can give you as to how you find that thing that you really like. And it is a very slippery slope. There's some gray area. Uh, but the best thing you can do is, is a, try something and really attack it. Pick one thing, whether it's something you, that you know for a fact you love or it's something you're curious about, and go all in. Commit to it. Put hours upon hours of your day into it. Put everything you have behind it. And you'll find out pretty quickly whether it's something that you really want to commit to for a long period of time, or it's just something that you're not going to be willing to do. Um, and what I would tell you is that eventually you'll find that thing that 
you look back four, five, six months and go, God, I don't feel like I've been doing this for any time at all, but I love it. And this is what I want to do. And that's the easiest way for someone who I think is struggling to, to figure out and nail down exactly what it is you want to do to find that thing. You gotta attack it, you gotta go 100%, you gotta fully commit to that one thing, and if it works, awesome. If it doesn't, find the next thing and fully attack it and fully commit so that then you know for a fact, all right, this is something I can see myself doing. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? I know we're coming up on time, I think. All right. Thank you all so much. Hopefully this has been enlightening for everyone. Hopefully there's stuff to take away. Like I said, uh, I've got business cards here with me for anyone who has any other questions or wants to reach out. Uh, I'll also be here for a little bit.